Hello and welcome to Night Friends. I'm your host, John F. Mertz. Tonight, the finale of The Longest Walk. When he came to, it was dawn. Collins moaned, partly disappointed to even still be alive, as the intense pain of his situation fully manifested, and he retched as the first agonizing waves of pain washed over him. His entire arm throbbed from the tip of the stump up to and including his shoulder and parts of his chest. He wondered if there was a chance he might have contracted some disease from the wolf's saliva. But only time would tell if that was the case. He rolled over and slowly got to his knees, willing himself to get it together. He was alive, after all, and that was reason enough to be happy, he supposed. The fire had burned itself out, but the charred remnants of branches and leaves remained as testament to the fact that Collins had indeed managed to start a fire in the first place, and staunch his injury. He looked at the stump where his hand had once been. It was encrusted with dirt and bits of brush and burned flesh, but the bleeding had stopped, and while he knew he'd lost a great deal of blood, Collins was still alive. Still alive. He turned his head slowly, still somewhat dizzy from the enormous amount of blood that he had lost, and then he gasped. The body of his friend Baker lay some distance away, completely naked amid the pine boughs and underbrush. Collins scrambled over to him, forgetting the waves of pain that shuddered through his body with every bit of movement. How had Baker come to be here? What on earth had happened to him? Then he saw the wounds to the body of his friend. Knife wounds. Collins shook his head, trying to remember. And then he did. He had a vivid memory of plunging his knife into the body of the wolf that had attacked him last night, over and over again, here, there, everywhere. Collins had hoped to fight the beast off. He'd been fighting for his life. But this was Baker, his friend. Confusion enveloped him. His vision blurred and then sharpened as if drawn to something. And then he saw it. The raised indentation in the center of Baker's chest. Collins peered closer, frowning as he did so. More confusion. Collins shook his head and winced at the pain, but this wasn't right. It couldn't be. He'd never known Baker to wear a cross. But there it was. Not outside of him. It was inside the chest and underneath the skin of his friend. How was that possible? Without thinking, Collins reached for his knife and slowly cut away at the skin around the cross, the tip of his blade managing to draw out part of the chain. Collins shook his head. What sorcery was this? He put the knife down and then slowly tugged at the chain until the skin around Baker's chest yielded, tearing free from the crucifix, and Collins drew it all the way out. It... it can't be! But even as he said it, he knew it was. Holding it aloft, Collins studied the crucifix that still dripped with a bit of Baker's blood. It was his! The very same cross that Sarah had given him! And a thought came to him then. Sarah had commissioned this piece from a silversmith in Sherburne. The cross was made from pure silver. Collins lowered the crucifix and looked down at his friend Baker's body. Then he looked around and saw the tracks. Deep tracks, gouged out of the very earth itself, scoring the ground where their battle had taken place. Wolf tracks. Not human boot prints. Colin shook his head and then slid the bloody crucifix back around his neck before slowly getting to his feet. He was shaky and the world wanted to turn upside down so he leaned against the nearby tree for support. He took several deep breaths before feeling well enough to walk. His home was close by but Collins couldn't rest. He'd have to get his horse and ride into town for the magistrate. 
He wasn't sure how he was going to explain things, but he knew one thing for certain. Somehow, Baker had become a wolf, and now he was dead. Collins took a final look at his friend and then started off toward his farm. After a few steps, his head cleared, and the pain started to diminish first in his head and then down into his arm. Instead, his entire body started to warm as fresh blood rushed everywhere. He kept moving, almost smiling now as he did so. Collins was already feeling better. So much better. That is the end of The Longest Walk. Join us next week when we start a brand new story. For Night Frights, I'm John F. Murs. Thank you for watching. And have a good night.